Commission, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile, found sometime last week, has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico, and sent to Wright Field, Ohio, for further inspection. Headline edition will bring you special reports and interviews. How you doing? This is the guy from Pittsburgh, and I'm a little rusty at this, so uh, bear with me. Uh, I've been concentrating on my forum and uh, mundane things going on. Order the tripod for that thing behind me, and the thing that's supposed to hold the board up won't stay up. It keeps falling off the tripod, so I'm going to return it. So that's one of the annoyances. I got to go through order stuff that doesn't work. Uh, before I get to what I'm talk, what I want to talk about tonight, I have one mystery that I can't understand, and I've seen this in streets all over the Bay Area. I've seen it in Las Vegas. I've seen it in Pittsburgh. I've seen it in Sacramento, San Francisco. Could someone explain what the deal is with tossing tennis shoes onto electric wires or phone wires that are way up in the air? People come along and they throw their tennis shoes up there. And uh, I walked, took a walk today to go get go get the my mail, two books on writing, because I'm going to write some articles and I'm rusty at that. AP book and another book. And there are these... Um, tennis shoes hanging on a wire in the middle between the uh, public defender's office on the left side of the street where I live and the special needs um, building. There's a whole bunch of special needs adults that go in there. And they're just hanging probably, oh, I don't know, 30, 40 feet up in the air. And you see tennis shoes all over the place. And I don't get it. Uh, now, you know, you go to Payless shoe stores, a uh, pair of tennis shoes can run you 20 bucks, maybe 25 I got one, some Mason shoes that are um, New Balance. They're 80 bucks a pop because they last. The ones at Payless fall apart in about six months. But why would you throw away your shoes? I've never understood this. So anyway, uh, what I want to talk about is Ed Dames. And he was on George Norrie a while back. And unlike usually to, uh, when he talks about the kill shot, he wasn't talking much about the kill shot. Now, until recently, the sun has been awfully quiet. We haven't gotten a lot of uh, solar flares. But he did talk about uh, triangular UFOs supposedly sucking up the radiation from Israel's test of their atomic weapon in South Africa. And Dames make these, makes these claims all the time. He sees this stuff in remote viewing with no substantiation from any other source. And then, uh, he talked about a case in Zimbabwe at the Ariel School. Now, this case happened in 1994, a school 20 miles outside the capital city. And these children uh, noticed three silver balls hovering in the sky outside the school. They flashed red and would disappear and then reappear. And the children weren't supposed to go out in this area because it had snakes in it and uh, thorn bushes and just that was not a good idea to be playing. 
and these things headed for transmission towers. And as you know, UFOs, for some reason, love to hang out around electrical towers. I have a theory that they suck energy out of the things, but I can't prove it. So anyway, uh, the kids noticed this craft coming down. And a figure dressed in black, three feet high, comes out of the object with a suit that was shiny and very tight. Creature had a, was just creepy looking. And reminded people like the beings seen in Verona in 1989 in Russia. And anyway, these kids um, were terrified, the younger kids particularly. They began to scream and called for help and uh, they ran back into the school and there was only one adult around and she was running the candy bar. So, and they got a telepathic message saying that uh, we were destroying the planet and we had to do something about it. And, well, Dame said that these Creatures weren't even there. The UFOs weren't even there. And yet, um, John Mack shows up after a researcher investigated this. The headmaster of the school didn't believe it at first, and these kids drew 35 drawings of what they saw. And... Mac interviewed about 12 students. There was an actual film about it. There's a video on the net on YouTube about this. And every one of the kids swears what they saw is what they saw. They didn't imagine it. It wasn't into their head. They saw the UFO. They saw the creature. And, you know, kids make things up. But there were 62 kids here. And fair distance away um, there was a school called the Pier House School 25 miles away and students there watched a UFO hover and, and uh, it looked like it was looking for a place to land and the school buses there their radios started getting nothing but static well that sounds like a UFO cutter to me Ed Dames so, Ed Dames said when he remote viewed it, there's nothing there. Just the students, and they were being telepathically influenced. There were no aliens there. There was no spacecraft. Well, Dames, I think you're full of it. You don't have, if 62 adults said that, you probably wouldn't claim that you remote viewed it and saw nothing. Did you remote you the school 25 miles away where they saw a UFO landing or trying to land didn't say that and Dames claims that these aliens that took away the radiation have special machines that can do that they're doing it covertly I kind of wonder wouldn't somebody notice unless these craft are invisible I mean, when you're doing above-ground nuclear test or below-ground, now, I don't know for certain, I haven't looked it up, whether Israel's test was above-ground. I think it was. But wouldn't notice something vacuum cleaning all the radiation and all the radiation disappearing. We have satellites that can detect nuclear weapons, that can detect heat sources from volcanoes, forest fires. The Russians have them, I'm sure. Maybe the Chinese. Someone noticed, hey, there's no radiation here all of a sudden. I wonder why. And they just set off a nuke. That would sure ring my alarm bell somewhere if I were monitoring radiation uh, going off somewhere because of an atomic bomb test. And then Dames also claims that there's a federation, a galactic federation, and they gave them these devices so they could come to the Earth and clean our planet up. 
He also says that three times they've stopped atomic wars in this planet. Plus, he says that, and this sounds like Gene Roddenberry and his Star Trek pilot, Assignment Earth, he says there are humans that were raised on another planet. They're stronger than we are. And they're operating on this planet to keep us from destroying themselves, but they're terrified of being discovered. Well, I guess uh, it's not quite Gary Seven and Roberta Lincoln and the computer in New York, is it? But it sure sounds like he took it straight from that Star Trek episode, the pilot that didn't get aired. Although fans have written uh, fan fiction about uh, Gary Seven. So, once again, Ed Dames makes a bald-faced claim and even the headmaster of the school and a teacher said that they now believe the children. They were skeptical at first. But he makes claim there was no UFO, there was no creatures. But all these kids draw what they saw. Now, even if they telepathically get a message, are they telepathically, excuse me, all going to imagine seeing a UFO? And one or more creatures coming out of it? I don't think so. Because most close encounters of the fourth kind have physical a physical basis in reality. Rendlesham did. Uh, Lonnie Zamora and Socorro did. Roswell did. And uh, other incidents where there have been crashes or landings. Or Travis Walton sure as hell knows they're out there. And Nora interviewed Travis Walton, but I guess that didn't happen either. Hi, Ed. So, once again, I think Ed Dames is full of it. Or he's drawing from fiction to support his remote viewing claims because he makes the wildest claims without anything really to back him up. Now, if he's right, it's nice that they're cleaning up our atmosphere. Maybe they've cleaned up L.A. I don't know. Do you? Okay, this is the guy from Pittsburgh, and I'll catch you next time. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.